Hello, I'm Arthur. Welcome to my lab. In the last video, we've looked at the three multimeters that I have. I made some measurements and discovered that uh, two of them were off compared to the, the third one. And actually this uh, Mastec multimeter, um, which is the cheapest of, of the three, uh, turned out to be the closest to the perfect measurements. So I'm using it today to uh, adjust my circuit that I made. Uh, one thing that I realized is that I was actually losing one digit of uh, precision when using my voltage reference because all these meters are only 4,000 count meters. So only on the two and a half volt was I getting all four digits uh, displaying in, in full range of the measurement. On the five volt, seven and a half volt and 10 volt ranges, I was only getting the three digits because the count dropped to the uh, next range. So I've added a voltage divider to my voltage reference board. Just a very simple circuit, uh, two resistors and, and a, a multi-turn pot in between them uh, so that I can precisely adjust the voltage. And I've decided to cut these voltages in half. So instead of seven and a half volts, I'm getting 3.75 volts now. And because Mastec was the most precise, I used this meter as my reference and uh, I used it to adjust the pot to get 3.750 measurement exactly on this meter. And so as you can see, uh, this Micronta Radio Shack uh, multimeter is showing 3.744. So it's um, six millivolts off compared to the Mastec. And the reading should be um, 7.500 divided by half should be precisely 3.750. So uh, in today's video, we'll take a look at this Micronta meter. I mentioned in the last video that I will be uh, taking apart these meters and trying to calibrate them. So that's what we'll do today. I will take this meter apart. We'll see what's inside of it and we'll see if I can adjust it to display precisely 3.750. So let's get to it. Now this is an older meter, so no fancy stuff, no HRC fuses in sight, inside. Uh, this is the cover for the batteries, and of course just regular plain old glass fuses is what was used back when this meter was manufactured. I'm not even sure when that was, but I'm thinking somewhere in mid 90s, 90s, I think. So let's pop this guy open. Um, I wonder if I should take out the batteries. I don't think so. I think that the batteries have a separate connection and are not mounted straight on the, on the main PCB, but we'll, we'll find out soon. So four screws holding this thing together. Up they go. Let's see if I can just, yep, comes right off. Okay, so this is the top cover and the back, just one piece. These are the swing arms and not too much inside. A piezo speaker, the battery hookup, just plain on regular wire. Actually, the two end terminals and a tap in the center. So it looks like they use uh, one, two, three cells for something, and then the rest of them for something else. And then just uh, some, oh boy, through the hull, uh, old school components. Let's see, I'll give you a closer look at the PCB.
and I'm not sure if I want to pull out this unit well let's see looks like this is a whole assembly actually this whole face of the meter is actually the meter that's that's all there is to it the rest of the box is just empty air uh, I guess they just figured this would look cool uh, if it came in a box like this but really all, all that uh, needed would be like a little battery holder here on the back of it and just enclose this in a much smaller case and there you go so we have uh, looks like two trimmer pots and just plain old uh, single turn pots I'm wondering whether that's that's uh, adjustment pots looks this way that's the only pots that I can see here um, Ah, this is a pretty old school oscillator, ceramic oscillator. Uh, current sense shunt for the amp meter. Um, and that's the only one I think here. Some uh, fairly precise resistors. I think they, they did some fine-tuning of resistors. I, I see two resistors here stacked on top of each other. Some transistors. Um, let's see, so this is a 10-amp range going through the shunt. Uh, the 400 milliamp range is also tapped in into the same circuit. How, does, how is that supposed to work? Uh, two separate ranges but going through the same shunt that's interesting and then the the uh, 4 milliamp um, I believe yeah 4 milliamp and uh, microamp range is the last one so decent full full size uh, jacks for for um, your banana plugs so no no split connectors like in the cheapest meters these days yeah, there we go. Tandy Corporation, copyright 1991. So this thing was designed in 91, and yeah, mid 90s is I think when when this one, this particular one, was manufactured. And the main chip is TCR6001, uh, 9321. So uh, 21st week of 93 is when this chip was made. So I guess that's that's really it. These two resistors is how I would tune this circuit. And I'm, I'm going to have to take a closer look at it. So I'm going to uh, take a quick pause here and inspect the board a little bit more to make sure uh, to, to figure out which, which of the two pots do I want to turn. I'm guessing that maybe one of them is coarse adjustment and the other one is, is fine adjustment. So I'll be back in a sec. All right, so here's the circuit that we have here. Uh, we have 1.2 volt coming in through 16.2K resistor to a 2K trim pot for the coarse adjustment and then 200 ohm resistor for the precise adjustment and then the voltage divider is completed with a 3K resistor. So actually a uh, circuit similar to what I have here for my voltage divider for my uh, reference, just a little bit different values and, and probably a little bit more precise than what I have here because it has two uh, points of adjustment. So again, 1.2 volt coming in on this resistor, going through here, through this coarse adjustment 2K pot, then to this 200 ohm and then uh, 3k resistor going to ground so I'm going to have to adjust this trim pot to get 3.750 reading on this meter and let's see um, what's the best way to do this so that you guys can see the reading I might have to do it upside down let's plug in my probe 
Okay. 3.742. That was one way. This is the other way. All right. That's a very, very tiny adjustment that I have to make. There we go. 3.750. What? Uh, almost. This is a very sensitive adjustment. I have to make very small movements. And it's kind of tricky doing that while not even looking exactly at the back of the meter. But let me try tune it a little bit better just a little touch uh, all right 3.750 let's see if this will hold I'll let it settle for a little bit And then I'm going to switch to some other ranges. I might need to touch it a little bit more. It's like, yeah, it's at zero, but then jumping to one and two. So maybe just, just a tiny little touch. Not even going to turn the trim pot. Oh, wow, that was too much already. I didn't even mean to turn it. Just wanted to, like, poke it a little bit. And that already was enough to make a several millivolt difference. Let's see. Yep. It would have been nice if they used a multi-turn trim pot. In fact, maybe I should see if I can replace that guy with, with a multi-turn, but that means I would have to put this PCB off of the front switch panel, which I don't really want to do because um, this display is mounted on this PCB, and I'm concerned that maybe the display might have to come off. I don't know. It looks like the display is just mounted on the on the board, and yeah, it'll, it'll stay on. So I might do that, but I don't think I have a multi-turn 200 ohm trim pot. Yeah, it really got very sensitive all of a sudden. I'm making very small movements, and it's jumping pretty far from one setting to another. Maybe I'll just stick with uh, some closed setting and just live with it being one millivolt off, which is already pretty good. 48, 49. Uh, just a little touch. Wow, just a little touch, and it already jumped 6 millivolts. Come on. 47. Alright, I think I'm going to stick with this. This is on the border of 3.751 and 3.750 which I think will be close enough for me so one thing that I didn't prepare in advance is something to uh, lock that trim pot in place I happen to have some old nail polish that I used for some project, I think, to um, make a PCB or something. 
So anyway, I hope that it will still work. I think I'll, I'll just use this nail polish to lock that trim pot in place. This should do it. So now my trim pots are adjusted and I have a little bit more precise of a reading. Not exactly spot on, but pretty close to it. So that was the a look in, inside of my old Micronta Radio Shack multimeter. And in the next video, we'll take a we'll take a look and adjust this Victor 86C, which also was off compared to the <laughs> the Mastec. So see you guys next time.